Father, we lift our hands to you. We lift our lives to you. And we want you to invade us. So we lift it up to you, you can move. Hey, 
Whatever it took you Now somebody open up your mouth And begin to surrender your life Begin to surrender your protectors Dwell here, live here, abide here, war here Take over, consume us, take over It's better, it's better, it's better to not
December 2022. Man, the month is just about gone. And when this month is gone, uh, this lunar year, calendar year, 2023 will be here and 2022 will be over. Oh my God, we're already in the Jewish year, 5783. Aren't you glad that God is really doing some awesome things in our lives? And we just thank him. I followed the Jewish calendar prophetically because, beloved, I want to stay up to date as a son of Issachar, being able to discern the times and to know what must be done. And, of course, we live in this world, and, um, you know, some things follow the calendar of the lunar calendar. You know, so I'm not going to get in a fight about it. Um, I keep two calendars. That's what I do. But I'm thankful that it doesn't cause me confusion because I'm not going to major on minors. And um, I'm here. I'm alive. And, again, I say it that this is the day that the Lord has made. I do rejoice and I'm glad in it. I'm grateful for it every day with Jesus. Can I get a witness? It's sweeter than the day before. Man, oh man. Look, I got to get into this word because beloved, you only have a certain time to keep everybody's attention. I promise you not to be long, but I will be thorough. And I most of all will give you what the Lord has said to me. We're dealing today with depression. We're dealing with depression because, beloved, there are so many suicides going on. I'm not just talking about celebrity suicides. When I get into this word, you're going to hear more about the st statistics that are going around now and, and uh, not necessarily numbers, but just occurrences of suicide happening in groups 
not just the young adults, but males, mid-age males, is just increasing. So um, people need something more than they're getting. And this depression is really taking over. But beloved, let's pray. Father, I'm here because you told me. I asked you for a word and you gave it to me. Lord, you're always faithful to give us a word. You're always faithful to impart your word to us and grant us what we need to go forward. Lord God, I pray, take me out of self. Use me for somebody else. Cover these, your people, with the blood of Jesus. And Lord, those that are listening from near and from far, be glorified in their lives. Lord God, there will be no demonic backlash, no satanic. Lord God, any kind of satanic uh, workings to stop the broadcast, to hinder the signal, to keep people from listening. Lord, there'll be no sickness, disease, infirmities, maladies. Nothing shall come upon us afterwards or doing. Lord, we're here as your vessels of honor to do what you called us to do. Now let somebody hear and obey and follow your word and you be glorified, Father. This is my prayer. Take me out of self. Use me for somebody else. In Jesus' name, amen. Hold up your Bibles, whether you have it by your tablet or your phone or the actual page. We used to tease a preacher, a friend of mine, said the biblical Bible. <laughs> oh, my God. Hold up your Bibles, whether you have it by page or however you have it. Let's declare together. Let's say this. Ready? Lord, I thank you that I have my Bible. It is my personal copy a basic instruction before leaving earth. I am a believer, not a doubter. I'm not just a hearer, but I'm also a doer. And my life is most much more the blessed because I hear and I obey the word of the living God. I declare the word is a lamp unto my feet, giving me present clarity and a light unto my path giving me future illumination. I will not be distracted. My mind is alert. My heart is receptive. I'm going to hear what the Lord has to say. And I further declare, as a result of what I hear today, I'm going to leave this experience better than I came to it. In Jesus' name, amen. Now, we want to make sure our, our uh, you know, backdrop stays right. Amen. You stay right here. Because we have the fireside chat today. Amen. God is good. Now, I want to say from the outset, as I hurry into this message, I'm talking about the kingdom remedy for depression. The kingdom remedy. As you know, I am full kingdom. I um, said that I'm leaving uh, from the traditional Christian faith. I've left, I've left the religion of Christianity. I am a believer. I am a Christ follower. But I want nothing to do with religion. Again, man started calling us Christians because they didn't know what else to call us. When they turned the world upside down, they couldn't describe us by anything but saying, those that have turned the world upside down have come here also. So I'm not ashamed of my heritage as a Christ follower. But I also understand that Jesus preached one singular message when he came, the kingdom of God. God's way of operating in the earth. So we have to do everything as believers from a kingdom perspective, even when it comes to dealing with depression, the maladies of the mind. Beloved, you hear so much, and I have great friends, great friends that are clinicians, that are mental health clinicians. And I'm not here to down talk them tell you don't use them. There are spirit-filled, Holy Spirit-filled, powerful clinicians. I start naming some, I get in trouble only from the standpoint that I don't want to forget any. So if you need one, get one that's spirit-filled, one that's filled with the Holy Ghost and loves the Lord. I have several. I can um, point your way and uh, recommend to you. So you will have an opportunity to write us, to share with us, and uh, we'll get you that information, um, you know, because we're committed to help you. But I'm here because, beloved, this issue with depression is causing suicides. 
at an almost epidemic rate. They're not really reporting all the people being found dead, self-inflicted gunshots, taking uh, overdose of drugs, and, uh, my God, intentional overdose of pills and hanging themselves. And, you know, just every way they can end it all because they feel like there is no hope. But if you hear me today for the next few moments, I want to give you hope and a remedy, a kingdom remedy for your depression. Because I would dare say, if you deal with that depression, you're going to end this epidemic of suicide. But let's get right to the word right now. For family, I want you to understand that depression, despair, hopelessness, helplessness is swiftly growing in epidemic proportions. All right? I've said to you that the rate of suicide among middle-aged men has increased. God have mercy. The rate of suicide among teenagers continues to be at an all-time high. And um, it's unfortunate that suicide is all too often an option to those who are depressed. It's all too often an option to those that are in deep despair. It's all too often an option for those that are feeling helpless, those that are feeling hopeless, and um, feel like there's no other way to cope, no other way to deal or get out of their current condition, which is plaguing their mind. You know, let me say from the outset that the loving father does not incite, ignite, or invite suicide. Yeah, there were biblical characters that committed it. You know, Saul tried to kill himself when he saw the battle had turned against him. And if you read the scriptures, some say he committed suicide. Well, he didn't finish the job. He made an attempt, but a young man came along, an Amalekite of all people, came along and Saul wasn't yet dead. The young man finished him off because Saul asked him to. And then when the young man brought Saul's crown and some other trinkets, to David, David had that young man killed because the young man raised his hand against God's anointed. But, you know, there was Judas who committed suicide, hung himself when he recognized he couldn't deal with the guilt of what he'd done by betraying Jesus. We had Ahithophel, who when his counsel wasn't heeded, he went off and hung himself. God have mercy. So, beloved, you know, it's in the Bible suicide but god does not endorse it god does not recommend it suicide is final it's final when you kill yourself you're dead unless somebody gets to you in time you're gone well some ask the question will you go to hell i'm not going to try to answer that because i was not there when you killed yourself but somebody else took their life i'm going to tell you a personal story later in this stream but i understand the feelings that come on us about suicide i understand it all too well and um man you know suicide is real the spirit the temptation of suicide is real and people feel hopeless they feel helpless they're convinced that there's no other way to deal come on let's go our current environment is a primary feeder of and into this condition. Let's tell the truth about it. The stresses and the strains of everyday life are added to by the Father. Catch this. Employment, work demands, or unemployment. Do you, do you realize what I'm saying is true? I was in that category of the unemployed and thought about killing myself. You know? Don't want to call the name of the chain because they paid my son for filming a commercial. But I remember they told me I was overqualified. They were my last stop trying to get a job. I was laid off for 18 months. 18 straight months. Couldn't get a job. By the grace of God, by my parents, family members, that's how we weren't on the street. I'll never never forget those times and the impact it had on my life but the gratitude i have for god and those who stood in the gap with us and for us but 
You got unemployment demands, you have employment demands, you got family and relational demands and pulls. You have an effort to cope with a growing list of challenges mixed with unexpected changes. Come on, I'm not praising the problem, I'm just telling you what we're dealing with. Pandemic put a hurting on a lot of us. We never, some of us, have never seen anything like this. Friends, you just talked to a week ago in the hospital on a ventilator or dead during this pandemic. Family members, you know, didn't at one point of the pandemic have the ability to close, had to have private funeral that family and friends couldn't come to. Some cases had to do cremations. Got so bad that they had refrigerated trucks in some cities to house the dead. I mean, this has been almost like a war. War time. Some people have suffered PTSD from this pandemic. I mean, we can go on. We weren't prepared for anything like this. And let's be honest about it. We were not prepared. Then you have the economy. I mean, they're talking about inflation's numbers are maybe easing up. Does that really translate to your pocketbook? Your gas has gone down, but food hasn't. Food is still high. Thank God for coupons. I'm a man of God. I'm a tithe. God said he rebuked the devourer for my sake, and he has. He provides coupons. He provides two for one deals. And I will be a fool not to take advantage of. That doesn't mean I lack faith. That means that I have enough faith to look in the paper to find a coupon or a two for one deal or somebody that's having a sale. We need to get out of that craziness of thinking I don't have faith because I use discounts. Listen, I'm a man of faith, I'm a man of wealth. I'm a man that believes God means for me to be wealthy. Deuteronomy 8.18 declares he put in my hands the power to get wealth. Isaiah said, the Lord my God is the one that teaches me the way I should go. Oh my God, he helps me to prosper. So, you know, I'm not a poverty minded man, but I'm not stupid. We use the mechanisms around us to buy coupons to to get help, okay? Don't hurt you. Anyway, but then there's the enemy of our souls. Lucifer D. Satan is doing all he can. Lucifer, devil, Satan, and his cohorts are doing all they can to seek to destroy you while we're doing all we can to obey God, resist the devil as we submit ourselves to God. And he does flee from us. He does run in terror dropping spores behind him. But I want to deal with the causes because depression is real, very real. Let me state some facts to you, okay? Here's some facts. Jesus came, hallelujah, to give us abundant life, life lived to the full, not life filled with compounded problems. If you're having compounded problems, Maybe you need to ask yourself, are you living the life of a believer? Hear me. This does not say that believers don't have problems. But in the midst of our problems, we have decisions to make. Okay? I'm going to say some things, but let me move on. Jesus also came to give us peace, not a life in pieces. No. No. Not with all our patience gone and our nerves worn to a frazzle. You know, as a preacher once said, um, Bishop Carter, Earl Carter, preached that message one time. People were like, ah, what are you preaching? But by the time he was done, folk were at the altar praising God. Your nerves are gone and your patience is gone and your nerves are worn to a frazzle. Man, that was a word because many of us have gotten caught up in the cares of this life so much so that we're not approaching life from a kingdom perspective. We're not looking at things through the eyes of the word of God. Now, let me kind of 
get out this truth. Because the Bible says that Jesus is our peace. And confusion is not the opposite of peace. Confusion is the absence of peace. Let me declare this scriptural truth. <clears throat> nothing that emanates from God, nothing that God created, nothing that God made has an opposite. It has no equal, it has no opposite. Death is not the opposite of light. Death is the absence of life. Darkness is not the opposite of light. Darkness is the absence of light. When life comes, death runs. When light comes, the darkness is dissipated. When joy comes, sorrow is absent. So, all too often we find ourselves trading what God has to offer for what the flesh feels it needs. And can I declare at the root of the issue is not just the devil. It's us not seeking God anymore. Come on, I'm going to deal with it. Kingdom remedy for depression. We'll rather watch the housewives of Tupelo, Mississippi than to open our Bible to give God glory and praise. we rather watch fantasies instead of seeking God for the realities and the strength to deal with them. Come on, be honest. Do we seek God like we should? Do we chase after God like we should? Do we go after that abundant life like we should? Or are most of us believers living life from the prison where I got to fill my flesh's tank first? I want to I go to the Word because I have to. Now, I believe this text is very familiar. I'm going to Matthew's Gospel, chapter 6, verse 25 through 33. Those that want to follow along with me, the Word of God is good, it's good, and it's rich. Matthew 6, 25 through 33 declares, Therefore I say unto you, take no thought for your life. Don't worry about it. What you shall eat or what you shall drink, don't worry about it. Nor yet for your body, don't worry about it. What you shall put on is not the life more than meat, food, and the body than raiment, clothes. Behold the fowls of the air, God have mercy. For they sow not, neither do they reap, nor gather into barns. Yet your heavenly Father feedeth them. I need y'all to remember that. And why don't you take a moment to share this broadcast? I know it's ministry to somebody. Come on. Are you much more than they? Which of you, by taking thought, can add one cubit to a statue? I, I'm 5'11 and a half. That's my height. Last time I went to the doctor, they tried to tell me I was 5'11. I seen that have lost a half inch. I said, no, the devil is a liar. No, Mr. Carrington, uh, people as they age, they shrink. I said, the devil is a liar. <laughs> oh, is not your life better than that? Which of you, by taking thought, can add one cubit unto a statue? And why take ye thought for raiment? Consider the lilies of the field, how they grow. They toil not, neither do they spin. And yet I say unto you, that even Solomon in all his glory was not arrayed like one of these. Wherefore, if God so clothe the grass of the field, which is today, and tomorrow cast into the oven. Shall he not much more clothe you? All right? O oh, ye of little faith. Get this, faith is a fact. I hear what God say. I believe what God say. I obey what God say. Then I adjust everything about me to the God said fact. What I say, how I say it, what I think, how I behave, got to be according to the word of God his principles, else I'm not exercising faith. Boy, you teach it up in here. So, take no thought, Jesus said. Don't worry about what shall we eat or what shall we drink or wherewithal shall we be clothed. But after these things, the Gentiles seek also. 
For your heavenly Father knoweth that you have need of these things. Lord, God knows I need shirts and shoes and pants and a coat. God knows I need hats and gloves, stockings, pantyhose. God knows I need things. I dare you declare my father knows that I have needs. But here's this text. Matthew 6.33. But seek ye first. The kingdom of God. God's way of operating in the earth. God's way of doing things. And his righteousness. And all these things shall be added unto you. Look, look. Don't, don't, don't miss this text. Again, verse 33. But seek ye first. Not stop seeking. God don't mind you shopping. Going and getting a tailor-made suit. Or dress or gown. God is not concerned about you spending money on shoes and clothes. He's not. I don't believe we should take our tithe and what we're going to give to his kingdom and use that for clothes and shoes, which some of us unfortunately do. Some of us unfortunately put a dollar in the offering in church and then go out to dinner between worship or after worship and spend $50. Now, I think something wrong with that. There's an imbalance in that to me. I'm not going to give the kingdom but a dollar, but I'm going to take my money and spend $50 for dinner after church with my friends. I think there's some priorities that's kind of off, and we wonder why we're depressed. Where your treasure is, there is your heart, and he can help you guard your heart. See, I'm dropping nuggets, but I'm being honest and truthful with you. Some of us are wondering, where is God? Well, you gave a dollar. How can you demand a hundredfold return from God on a dollar when you spend $50 in the restaurant for your dinner? I'm just wondering. I mean, are expectations that off? Is the balance and the scales that bad? Anyway, God don't mind you going out to dinner, but seek him first. God don't mind you spending $50 for your dinner, but seek him first. Seek him first. I believe that the Lord has given us this word today, and I'm almost done, to help us with ammunition so that we will not be overrun and overcome by depression. Because you, you, you got to understand, we can't cultivate those seeds of depression. Worry, doubt, fear, anxiety, hopelessness, helplessness, and despair. All these seeds do is develop more of what they already are. Hopelessness, helplessness, anxiety. All these seeds lead to depression. And depression, unchecked, leads to dark places but all too often bring tragic endings. I'm not trying to open no wounds. I'm not trying to make somebody uh, have horrible memories, but if you don't learn to swim before you fall in the water, you are more likely to drown. If you don't fill your well with water, you're more likely to succumb to thirst when you get thirsty. It's kind of hard to wait while you're struggling for life to get what you need to live. And, and can I say as I move along in this lesson, that depression unchecked leads to tragic endings often because folk have nothing in that well to draw from when they get depressed beyond the human ability to help. Then we have pride that kicks in, people telling people they are right and they're not. People lying because they're too proud to ask for help. 
to ask for somebody to help them out of their circumstance. In the African American community, mental health has been an issue that's not always been discussed up till now. And I'm telling you, many of us would go around here and we would lose it. That's why so many parents uh, were um, dealt with for child abuse because you had more than you could take. Instead of calling a family member, if you had one, to say, can I get a break for a minute? I, I'm, I'm having a hard time dealing with this. Or even if it wasn't about your children, just life. How many of us proudly stood there and in the words of so many, sucked it up? When after a while, there was no room for what you sucked up and you were about to explode. You were about to, to just do something to yourself or somebody else. Countless times I've heard somebody say to me, I'm just driving and I'm looking for somewhere to run off the road and kill myself. Thank God, God has kept me from having anybody do that on my watch to that degree. Tragic. Tragic. But here's a remedy. Let's turn to the kingdom now to remedy this. First of all, before I read these texts, I want to say that there was a time where we praised God without our cell phones. I have nothing against praise breaks. I have nothing against filming these things, you know, so you can watch later. But I'm just asking, are you dancing while others are dancing? Are you praising God while others are praising God? Or are you just stand up there with your camera phone, your phone camera, recording the whole thing with a smile on your face? And then you leave from the presence of God and never felt him once. You did a good recording, but you got nothing out of it other than a memory that you can watch. But did you get anything out of it that God intended? See, our, our, our spectrums are off somewhere. When I can come to church, I need an organ to pump me up. I need a chord hit on that organ to make me go, ha! Ah! Something, something wrong, something wrong, something wrong, something wrong. Something is wrong when I need external stimulus other than my thoughts of how good God done been to me. God have mercy. Y'all yo, yo, yo hearing what I'm saying? Aren't we the ones that jump up in testimony service and say, when I think of the goodness of Jesus, and, ah, he's done for me. You know, aren't we the ones that say that? To try to stir up the crowd, but we really don't mean it other than to say it better than Sister Susie, who just said the same thing two minutes ago. Are we allowing the accompaniments of church to get in the way of really getting with God? I think one of the reasons why many are depressed, especially in the house of God, is because somewhere along the line we've lost our joy. Oh, we got emotion, but do we have joy? Look at this powerful text in 2 Chronicles. Chapter 30, verse 23 through 27. Second Chronicles 20, 23 through 27. What does the Bible say? What does the Bible say? And the whole assembly took counsel to keep other seven days. Look at this. And they kept other seven days with gladness. For Hezekiah, come on now. King of Judah did give the congregation a thousand bullocks and seven thousand sheep. And the princes gave to the congregation a thousand bullocks and ten thousand sheep. And a great number of priests sanctified themselves. And all the congregation of Judah with the priests and the Levites. And all the congregation that came out of Israel and Judah. God have mercy. And the strangers that came out of the land of Israel and that dwelt in Judah rejoiced. Rejoiced. I remember Wilbur McKinley and Roy Brown, Bishop, Archbishop, Roy Brown and Archbishop Wilbur McKinley, uh, the prayer days they used to have up in Brooklyn. God have mercy, Bishop Roy Brown used to have those prayer days. And uh, I remember one day, either him or Bishop McKinley said, rejoice. And they said it means to lighten up, brighten up, and jump up and down. <laughs> you are in control of your ability to rejoice. 
Oh! So there was great joy in Jerusalem. Did y'all hear that? For there was great joy in Jerusalem. The people in Judah rejoiced. For since the time of Solomon, the son of David, king of Israel, there was not like this in Jerusalem. Then the priests, the Levites, arose and blessed the people. And their voice was heard, and the prayer came up to his holy dwelling place, even unto heaven. Verse 26 again out of 2 Chronicles 30. So there was great joy in Jerusalem. For since the time of Solomon, the son of David, king of Israel, there was not like the like in Jerusalem. Here's another text. And I'm closing. I'm getting very close. This is good. I'm giving remedies now. Acts chapter 8, verse 5 through 8. The Acts of the Apostles. Chapter 8, verse 5 through 8. Come on, stay with me. Stay with me. Then Philip went down to the city of Samaria and preached Christ unto them. And the people with one accord gave heed unto those things which Philip spake, hearing and seeing the miracles which he did. For unclean spirits, crying with a loud voice, came out of many that were possessed with them. God have mercy. God have mercy. And many taken with palsies that were lame were healed. And there was great joy in that city. Verse 8 again. And there was great joy in that city. As I close, joy is not merely an emotion. No, it's not. Nor is it an emotional state. Joy has nothing at all to do with your emotions. I can have joy while I owe money. I can have joy while I'm grieving a loved one. I can have joy while I'm sick in my bed from a hangnail on my big toe. <laughs> oh my God, what is joy? Joy is a deep-seated knowledge. Come on, here's what we have let depression win today because we've forgotten that joy is a deep-seated knowledge, a knowledge that those who are kingdom citizens have and develop over time because every day with Jesus becomes sweeter than the day before. Are you hearing what I'm saying to you? Joy becomes a knowledge that in Christ and because of Christ, that regardless of let me calm down. Of the battle that I fight and the challenge I face, I win. It's a knowledge. I preached on Sunday about how the three magi looked for Jesus. They, they knew Herod meant no good. They heard the angel tell them, go home another way. They felt Herod getting upset. Herod rushed them off for a minute until he got his composure back together. But they kept looking for Jesus. God had mercy. The three Hebrew boys in the midst of a fiery furnace. O king, be it known to you. We're not going to bow, but we're going to look for the Lord. You know, because in the Lord is my joy. I love that scripture in Nehemiah. Go your way. Eat the fat. Drink the sweet. Send portions to those who have none. Because the joy of the Lord is my strength. We've lost our strength. We've lost our mental capacity to be strong again. We give in to too much depression because we don't practice joy. We have what I call amnesia. It's a made up word coined by me and I take full credit. You know what amnesia is? Selective amnesia. We think about what God does, but then we look at what's going on and our memories become slack and short. And we somehow think that what we're dealing with is greater than the God we serve. But did I not say to you that joy is a knowledge? I hope you never again wait to go to church to exercise joy. I hope that you never again Wait for the Hammond B3 organ, which I love, or the chord, or any other 
sink of air back in the day. You know, I, I remember all the instruments. I'm a musician. Oh, you never wait for the bass drum or the beat or a praise track to express joy. Joy is not a feeling, but it's a constant state of knowledge. Despite of, in the midst of, because of Jesus, I am victorious. Can, can you say that? Can somebody write that in the notes? In spite of, in the midst of, because of, I am victorious in Jesus. If that don't give you joy, then nothing will. We replace seeking with feelings-based existence. I, I don't feel it. Most people have adopted the colloquialisms of our time. I ain't feeling it. Beloved, it's not about feelings. What, what is God saying? What has God done? I'm not coming against our colloquialisms. I'm just asking you, what are we living by? Colloquialisms, today's sayings, or the knowledge that in Christ, with Christ, and because of Christ, I am always a winner. Can I tell you this? Great joy is given to us. We cannot afford to continue to trade our joy for a focus that is now on everything but joy. I'm not telling you to ignore your situation. God knows I have challenges right now. Beloved, and those with discernment, you will hear the voice of God. I can use help and overcome this challenge, but he is my help. He's already helped me and he's helping me further. But you know what? I have joy. I don't beg for help. I'm not begging for money. What I'm saying is, despite of what I need, I've come to know that my need is temporary because I've sold the seed that when I had need, my need is met. Know that scripture that says, my God shall supply all my need according to his riches and glory by Christ Jesus. Do you not know there's a prerequisite to be able to even say that? Because many of us are arguing about giving a tenth of our earnings and because many of us are arguing about whether we should tithe or not. Because so many of us are arguing about should I even go to church anymore. You're not putting yourself in a place where there are conditions of scripture that are real. But when you fail to meet the condition, how can you claim the provision? Lack of meeting the condition leads to lack of receiving the provision. Before I can declare my God shall supply all my need according to his riches and glory by Christ Jesus. Check out a few texts earlier that talks about how the people gave freely to the ministry of the man of God. Did not hold back when Paul needed it, when others needed it, when the people of God and the house of God needed it. Folk were first to answer, first to heed the call, first to acknowledge that I'm going to do what God tells me to do and give. I mean, be honest. Be honest. We have done things at times to diminish our joy instead of increase our joy. We have done things at times to give the enemy of our soul legal right to keep us in depression. And he's standing back laughing, standing back mocking, whispering in our ear, look at you now. Where is your God? What is your God going to do for you? How is your God going to bring you out of this? Beloved, I got to close, but I'll tell you the truth. Joy is the kingdom remedy for depression. The Bible says a merry heart does good like a medicine. We got to get our joy back. Now, Here's how we're going to get our joy back, and I promise you, I'm closing. Look back at Matthew's Gospel 633. Look back there. Come on, come on, go back. It may hurt you to see such truth that we declare so much, but yet apply, apply so little. But seek ye first. 
first, foremost, above all else. But seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things shall be added to us. What is the kingdom of God? It's God's way of operating in the earth. Prefero Dalla, I love, man of God, I love your definition. God's way of doing things. Righteousness, peace, and joy in the Holy Ghost. That's the kingdom of God. God's agenda, God's plan and purpose. That's the kingdom of God. I would dare say, when we get back to seeking him first, joy would heal our depression. Beloved, real quick, I remember a long time ago, long time ago, oh my, I told you about I couldn't get a job at a convenience store. I was laid off for work 18 months straight. Between my parents and my siblings, they saw to it that my wife and I, it was just the two of us at the time, our rent was paid. What I did, I left a good government job and tried my hand in private industry where I could make more money. But I did not understand the warning that I got. That too many times in private industry, layoffs come quick and early, especially to the last hire. Don't have the government tax money to bail out employees in private industry. So I left my good government job and I went out to private industry, started making more money. But then layoffs came in that industry. I was in construction. I was an inspection engineer. I went to school for architecture. I studied and dabbled in civil engineering. And I got a good job with a civil engineering firm going out testing in the field. I'm not going to go into too much detail because some of y'all wouldn't know what I'm talking about. But I was a materials tester. When they poured the concrete, I had to take my own tests. And if it didn't pass those tests, I had to tell them, stop the pour. Uh, had compressive strength. Had all kinds of strength I had to test, you know. And um, good job. Good job. I can tell you some of the projects I was on. But that's not important. But they're still standing today. <laughs> but I got laid off. 18 months. I couldn't get a job. The company closed down. They're not even around today. Uh, horrible time. And it got so bad that I went to a convenience store and applied for a job because I needed income. I got tired of my parents bailing me out every month. And um, I went to this convenience store and um, they told me, sir, you're too qualified. We can't hire you. You're going to want a lot of money, which was true. But I begged the a manager. I said, sir, I just need some money coming in. I can't continue to live like this. I have rental eviction notices on my door every month. I got I to gotta do something. And when I didn't get that job, I went home. My wife was working. Yeah, she was working in the beauty shop. My wife been in college mythology for over 20 years. She used to be one of the best hairdressers in Baltimore, Althea Carrington. Yeah, my baby. Mm. One of the best. But she wasn't bringing in enough, and it wasn't her job to support the family like that. It was mine. So I had that depression on me that I couldn't get a job at a convenience store. So I came home. She was still working. And while there, I just heard these voices in my head say, end it all, end it all, end it all, end it all. You're no good. You're worthless. You can't even get a job at a, at a convenience store. And I began to go into the kitchen. And I laid on that floor and cried in a fetal position. And then I finally got the gumption to stand up. I went over to the district strainer. There was a knife in that dish strainer. And I put that knife to my wrist. And I was beginning to press it against my pulse. And as I was pressing it and about to press it, 
The phone rang. The phone rang. And it was like something shot me. And I know that was the Holy Ghost. I said, pick up the phone. I'm telling you literally how it happened. I picked up the phone. And it was the Baltimore Housing Authority. Those of you that still work there, and you know me. Say, come in for an interview. I asked them when, and they told me when the interview was, and I said, I'll be there. I dropped the knife in the sink and cried like a baby. I put on the only suit I had, <laughs> and I went down to that interview and got that job. At the time, paying me 32000 a year back in the early 80s mid to the early 80s, maybe mid to late 80s. I left there in 86, no, 89, I left there in 89. And I remember as I held that knife to my wrist, my life was beginning to pass before me, my wife coming home, finding me dead on the kitchen floor. And I looked back at that and I said, I could not go through with it. The phone rang and sobered me up. How could I be so selfish? I told her I love her. Only to find out that I got the job. Making more than I ever made back then. Back in the mid, early to mid 80s, 32,000 a year was a lot of money. Health coverage, full health coverage. Going to school reimbursement. Had I killed myself, I wouldn't have seen my firstborn son. But my wife was also expecting at the time. And I didn't know it yet. You know what? As I close this broadcast, I want to take authority over every spirit of depression. I want to take authority over every spirit of suicide. I want to speak to every demon talking in your ear and say the blood of Jesus is against you. The blood of Jesus is against you. Cease and desist your talk. You have nothing to say anymore. We shut you down by the spirit of God. And we command the powers of darkness. Loose your hold of depression. And Lord, let the people Cry out to you. Cry out for help. And receive it today. In Jesus' name. Beloved, I told you I have therapists. I have friends that are in the business. I will give you the information. Look, you can contact us. I've already spoke to the enemy. I, I'm a man of God. He will listen to me. And he's going to back up off of you. In Jesus' name, I need you to take that same authority. I need you to make a wise decision. Call out to God. Or call me. I'm going to call out to God too. 443-776-0255. 443-776-0255. If the line is tied up, I promise you, we'll call you back. Email us. Ministry at yahoo.com. LBC Ministry at yahoo.com. Email. Go on my website, the website of Life Builders Church. That's lbcbaltimore.org. Go on that website. You can write us there. Please do not make a foolish decision of taking your life because you can't come back from that. I speak to you as a man of God. Don't do it. Depression will leave you, but you must seek the joy of the Lord first, his kingdom first. Remember what I said as we close, that joy is not an emotion. Joy is not an emotion. Joy is not an emotion. Joy is a knowledge that in Christ, with Christ, because of Christ, I am victorious. 
11, I got to go. My friend Ed Reynolds is about to come on. He was watching me earlier. And uh, others are coming on now. I need you to take this word, meditate on it, abide by it, and don't give the enemy the satisfaction of killing you before you see purpose come to pass. This is my prayer for you. This is the word of God today. Pray it over, fast it over, labor it over. Now let's let the joy of the Lord do it his journey. God bless you. Have a smile upon you. Join us Sunday virtually. Amen. For first Sunday, 10 a.m. We'll have more announcements about it. You don't want to miss the word. Man, the first Sunday is the time we're taking our uh, first worship, actually. It's first worship, which happens to be on the first Sunday. We'll be virtual, but we're going to be in worship. We don't have New Year's Eve celebration anymore. We have the first worship, the first day of the year. Whatever day that New Year's Day falls on, we come together, give God the first of our day in worship. Join us virtually, 10 a.m. Life Builders Church, either on this venue or our other venues. And let God arise and every enemy be scared. I love you. The joy of the Lord is our strength. Got to go. God bless you.